So hi, everyone. My name is Mike Zach, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. We're going to be talking about XPNA specifically, but more or more in the relationship of how does it interact with Microsoft Fabric and Power BI? And really, what are the differences between the two and how you can leverage them within your current infrastructure? I promise you today, I'm not going to bore you to death with PowerPoint, but there are a few slides that I want to go through just to set the foundation so everyone's on the same page before we actually jump into a live demonstration and being able to really see this in action and how you can apply the Actaris technology to your existing fabric infrastructure. For today's agenda, there's a lot of items that we're going to cover, mostly going to be spending a lot of time in the demo. But what we want to do is we want to kind of cover what is this, what's an overview of Actaris, like who is Actaris and what technology do we bring to Power BI and Excel. We're also going to get into a little bit more details of what is Microsoft Fabric. Uh, a lot of you probably already know and have been using it, but just again, set the, the even, even playing field for the broader group, just understanding what is Microsoft Fabric and how are individuals using this in today's world. We're going to then go through a comparison of what is a lake house versus a warehouse. We're also going to get into details of what this whole concept of one lake, which is the overarching infrastructure behind Fabric and being able to leverage that effectively within the organization. We're going to go through some use cases today, the right back technology. So the component that is really highlighted in today's demonstration is how are we able to write back using Microsoft Fabric and Power BI together to a central single source of truth. And that write back component is an edit mode. So think of it more as inputs versus outputs, inputs being that write back capability and the different use cases and how clients are applying that write back technology specifically to Power BI and Excel. And then we'll get right into a live demonstration. So first and foremost, just wanted to properly uh, introduce myself. So my name is Mike Zach. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Actaris. I'm really excited today to showcase our technology and how we're revolutionizing the XPNA space, specifically built around the Microsoft ecosystem. I've had a long career in financial services and financial technology, selling treasury management systems, as well as uh, reconciliation platforms. I just a, a fun fact about myself. I really like traveling, hiking. I currently live in Las Vegas. I know probably people think of that. I'm crazy living in Las Vegas and I would have been in the same boat three years ago before I moved here, but it's absolutely beautiful. And, and no, I do not live on the strip. I live about 20 minutes away near a national park called Red Rock. I've been to over 44 countries now. This year I went to the Philippines and Japan and I just my wife and I really love traveling. And if I had to make any type of recommendation of where I believe a lot of people should go, if you have the appetite, of course, is Cambodia. It's probably one of my favorite countries that I've ever been to. So enough about me. Let's dive right into providing everyone a little bit of an overview of Actaris. And that way, kind of understanding the technology that we're bringing to the Microsoft Fabric Network. So Actaris was founded in 2011. We actually started off as a managed service uh, provider, uh, implementation really around different planning solutions on the market, some of the largest planning solutions on the market. And in 2016, we launched our actual product called Actaris, which is a financial reporting and consolidation platform with planning capabilities built on top of that. We have won many awards over the years. Last year, we won the Gartner Cool Vendor Award. This year, we were included in the Mag Gartner Magic Quadrant for financial planning or EPM. We are on G2 reviews, have won multiple awards there, software reviews as well. And last but not least, our technology that you're going to see today actually was licensed by Microsoft back in May of this year. And they're going to be embedding our technology in the Dynamics FNO ERP system. The Dynamics FNO ERP system didn't have a, uh, a full-fledged XP&A planning solution. And so Microsoft went to market and they selected Actaris to be included in the Dynamics FNO infrastructure. And then last, uh, just some of our clients, which you can see down below in the slide, in the slide deck here, a lot of large clients that use our technology all the way down to some of the smallest clients. It's very versatile just because Power BI is very versatile. A lot of clients are using them as well as Microsoft Fabric. So it's, it's a great add-on platform to really enhance your experience with Microsoft Fabric. And as 
we have done a lot of these webinars. People have asked us and, and provided some some really great feedback and just wanted to get into some more real life case studies and how clients are actually taking the Actaris technology and the Microsoft Fabric infrastructure and really bringing the advantages back to the business. But we have a we have lots of case studies on our website. Today, I'm going to highlight one of those, which is from American Tire Distributor. Before Actaris, they were doing a lot of things manually. They were doing, they were having all their information in Excel, going through consolidation. So 80% of their of people's time were really spent on non-value added tasks. Fragmented data because all their data was in disparate systems. They were using Excel to kind of pull all that together and make sense of it. And with Actaris, what they were able to do, converting from their Excel infrastructure and their more manual processes, they were able to streamline the integration of their source systems into a single source of truth, which is exactly what Fabric is bringing to the table. We'll go into more details in just a moment. They were able to reduce their time, their manual efforts in bringing all that data into a common infrastructure, and then have saw significant savings just by implementing this technology that you'll see today within their Microsoft ecosystem. They didn't have to have their users learn a new product, which is a very big component. Um, nobody likes change, we're all humans, but at the end of the day, things do need to change within the organization. And the more that you can use that people are familiar with and accessible tools, the better. So our technology is built on the Microsoft ecosystem, specifically Power BI, Fabric and Excel which just gives the ability for the user to leverage that skill set going forward without having to learn a new system. So that was a huge time saver for them because they had a tight deadline to get this up and running to meet internal deadlines. But the idea is that they were using outdated systems and outdated processes. We were able to come in, help them bring that, that infrastructure into one common place, which is what we'll get into later, which is called One Lake. And then ultimately seeing the benefits cascade across the organization by having all this in one single source of truth. Like I said, we have a lot of case studies on our website, lots of uh, videos as well, te video testimonials. So feel free to head over there to take a look at anything that aligns to your business and your industry. So let's talk about Power BI right back. This is a very key term in the software that we do offer. Now, before we get into the right back piece, and I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with Power BI, and Power BI is a one of seven mechanisms that are built inside of Microsoft Fabric. Power BI is more of the visualization tool, where other components are more data aggregation, data pipeline management, ETLs, engineering for machine learning. So that's all built into Fabric. Power BI is just the visualization mechanism to bring that information to life to allow business users to make strategic business decisions. When we think about fabric, I, I like to use this analogy, which most of you probably can relate to. If you're trying to throw a party, let's say like a, a going away party or any type of party, there is a few things that make a party successful. Decorations, people, food, drinks, Right? These are different components that makes a successful party. Fabric is kind of the same way. Fabric is the overarching party itself, but there's different components that need to be implemented to have a successful party or to have a successful deployment. With Fabric, you're looking at a power query, which is an ETL layer. You have to cleanse your data to make sense of it and connect it across the organization. When you have a lot of data coming from HR, sales, finance, they all speak different languages. So when you have that coming into one common environment, you have to make sure that you're processing that and connecting all these data points together so that way all of your reports make sense. Visualization. Well, once you get all the data, you need to visualize it. So think of these seven, I'm not gonna run through all of them, but these seven items, these are what make a successful party or what make a successful deployment of Microsoft Fabric. Power BI is just one element of Microsoft Fabric, which is the data visualization component. But the important component before you get to visualization is to make sure that all of your data is cleaned. Maybe you wanna analyze that information before you bring it to a more of a visualization layer. And so today we're gonna to talk about really one of these areas, uh, knowing that there's others that can be utilized within the Microsoft ecosystem. 
So here's just a quick diagram outlining all the different components associated with Microsoft Fabric. So again, imagine all these different things coming together underneath one umbrella. That's what Microsoft Fabric has done. Now, clients and, and users have the ability to create their own data mapping. So if they want to connect to their source systems internally, they can bring that in through Fabric. They can do all the data cleansing, add additional information and augment that data without disrupting their source system. You don't have to connect this to a Microsoft system. This can be any type of system that you're working with internally, Salesforce, HubSpot, uh, you have uh, HRIS systems, ADP, Ceridian, all these other platforms that you can connect to, even getting to a point of connecting to some Amazon platforms like Amazon S3. Once you bring all that data in, you cleanse it, everything makes sense. Maybe you wanna run some machine learning on that data and learn from the different patterns and trends. Once again, it's all built inside of the Microsoft Fabric ecosystem with tailored templates, making it very self-sufficient. Once you have all that in place, then Power BI comes in to really visualize that data and bring it to life, which is really where end-to-end -end users wanna be able to see that data, and that's where they're making their strategic business decisions after seeing all that information in one place. Now, there's this concept that always gets thrown around which is data warehouses versus data lakes. And what's really the difference between the two? Well, the main difference between a data warehouse and a lake house, a data warehouse is more of a relationship database where you have lots of transactions, more structured, versus a lake house is like unstructured data, semi-structured data, images, uh, things like that, versus data. So that's kind of the biggest difference between the two. I'm not gonna go through this slide because I know most of you wanna see a demonstration more than anything else, but these slides will be available after today's webinar, plus today's webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you will always have access to this. But this is a great slide if you ever have that question of really what is the difference between a data warehouse and a lake house, and what is important for the organization uh, really to, to roll out first. And then when we talk about Microsoft Fabric, the entire ecosystem of Microsoft Fabric is built on what is known as One Lake. If you're familiar with OneDrive, then you already know what One Lake is. One Lake is for data, whereas OneDrive is for files. So we use OneDrive internally, and I'm sure most of you do as well. That's where we save all of our important documents, contracts, agreements, um, you know, Excel spreadsheets that we want to share with other people, we upload it to OneDrive. OneLake is the exact same concept, except it's dealing with data. It's one place where everyone, depending on your rights and, and security, that's always wrapped around all of this. But all of that data sits in one place that people can access, meaning they can pull it into Power BI, they can pull it into Synapse Warehouse, and they can pull it into real uh, Synapse Real-Time Analytics. So these are all the foundational blocks related to Microsoft Fabric that you can use inside of this one lake. So one lake is really an inf information that is all the data across the organization is stored in one place that people can then access directly. Like I said, the best way to think about this is exactly like OneDrive. How you're using OneDrive today is exactly how you're going to be using OneLake in the future, except one is data-related versus file-related. Now, looking at the concept of write-back, this is a very important component because it kind of completes the feedback loop or the life cycle of data. When we think about data, most of, most of the time, that is spent is really getting all the information into one place, into that one lake, then being able to connect that to, let's say, Power BI or Excel to bring it to life. That alone is extremely beneficial to any business in today's world. They wanna get the information out quickly and get the information in the hands of the end users as quickly as possible as well. That's where one, one lake, which is a fabric infrastructure and Power BI being one element inside of fabric, reading from that one lake and actually bringing the data to life. The last piece is what is known as this write back component. When I mean by write back, I mean changing data in Power BI or Excel and writing that data back to that one lake infrastructure. Now we are not changing actual data. Actual data will always be locked down. What we're doing is we're taking a copy of that actual data 
and using it in what we call a scenario dimension. Scenario being like a plan, a budget, a forecast, uh, a what if scenario, how, whatever naming convention you want to apply to that, we're just taking a copy of the actuals and that's what we're writing back to. We're writing back to that plan or that budget. Once again, we're not writing back to actual data. But the great news is that not only is all of your actual data in the one lake, which is being connected to your Power BI and Excel reports, that single source of truth, we're taking a copy of our subset of that and writing back to it. And this is great for what if analysis. What if my revenue goes up by 10%? What if we add five new people? You don't wanna go back to your source system to make those changes. That wouldn't make any sense, but you need a simulation tool that represents a copy of your actual data for comparison. I wanna see what actually would happen if we hired five new people and what we're, where we actually are and what that increase looks like, not only just from an HR side, but also a finance side. Well, my expenses are gonna obviously increase. Well, what does that mean for my bottom line? So you wanna be able to create a simulated environment using the tools you're already comfortable with. And that's exactly what this write back technology is bringing to the table. Now, the last slide uh, before we get into a demonstration really just highlights more of a visual representation of what we just talked about today. So fabric being the foundation of a new infrastructure that is being brought to organizations, making it very easy for them to bring data in, massage that data and visualize that data all within a single source of truth. So that's that lake, that one lake component. We connect that information to front end tools like Power BI and Excel, once again, to bring it to life. And then the write back piece is only writing back data that you want to change, but not disrupting your actual infrastructure. So it's a clone or a copy of that infrastructure. So hopefully this makes sense to everyone, at least at the surface level. I definitely encourage if you're interested in Fabric in, in more details, going to our YouTube channel. Uh, there's also a lot of great YouTube um, videos out there that explain the whole Fabric infrastructure and how to get started. We're also more than happy to help you in this journey just because we feel that it's going to be very revolutionary by not only leveraging a, an infrastructure that any end user can manage, it's also keeping your data in one place. The same benefits that we received with SharePoint and OneDrive in the past, we're now going to see with data itself. So when we have a, a certain individual from a department reaching into that one lake, they're seeing the same data that someone else in a different department is seeing, and you don't have to maintain everything. It all gets maintained in one place, and it's all within the Microsoft ecosystem, which is a, a trusted vendor. So without further ado, what I want to get into now is a live demonstration of this write back component and also a little bit more about the fabric infrastructure. Just as a quick reminder, if you have any questions, please uh, put those questions on the side over on the, uh, the GoToMeeting webinar panel. There is a question box. If you have questions, we'll be able to go ahead and answer those at the end of today's session. Okay, so let me go ahead and get out a full screen here and go right into. Power BI or Microsoft Fabric. So again, Microsoft Fabric is the overall collection of multiple different items. So if I go down here at the bottom, right now I am toggled on Power BI, but if I wanted to go to Azure Active or Data Director or Data Factory, Azure Data Factory, that is an ETL tool that can connect to different systems and you can build different pipelines. And you have data engineering, which is more for la uh, large language models for AI and machine learning capabilities. Same thing with data sciences. And then, of course, you have real-time analytics that you can run across your data. But again, everyone's working off of that single source of truth or that one lake concept. And if you want, uh, at any point, I think uh, at the moment, Fabric is free for all users. You can set up a 60-day free trial to really get some exposure to all the different components of Fabric. You can create a data pipeline to your existing systems, bring all that data in, clean it up, augment it for whatever reason, and then use Power BI or Excel to bring it to life and create visuals off of that. And that's where we're going to spend a majority of our time today is really talking about the end result. We can spend an entire session talking about how do we get data in to Fabric. We can have another session of how to actually model all of that data a third session that talks about analyzing it 
in a deeper way from the machine learning side. And then lastly, we can have a, a session on purely just looking at, how, well, how do we see the data? And that's where Power BI comes in. Since we talked about the write back piece, that, that's what I wanna be able to highlight to everyone today because it's a huge differentiator. At the moment, what you can do is you can only see output. You get the data in, you visualize the data, and that's where it stops. But when you get to that point, you're going to want to be able to start changing the data because to prepare for the future, we need to be able to test certain elements of our business. We need to increase our costs. We need to reduce our, our costs. We need to see all these different scenarios so that way we can prepare for the future and forecast for the future. And that's where the Actaris technology really comes into play is that last mile being able to make data manipulation without disrupting your source system information and seeing the changes all in real time within the same visualization tool that you're already used to today, Power BI and Excel. So here we have a Power BI report that we have built for demo purposes. What we like to do, and I'm just gonna make this full screen, is we like to, to traditionally create a landing page. The landing page will itemize out all the different areas of the report that we can toggle to. Every landing page is very different. And if most of you already know Power BI, you know how flexible the tool is. So your color scheme, your navigation, all of that can be configured at the user level. And that's really the biggest push with Fabric is making this very easy for end users to bring data in, manipulate that data or massage that data and um, provide you know, AI on top of that and then visualizations. They're making it very easy to do all within in Microsoft Fabric. Power BI is really just more of that visualization layer on top of that data, whatever that data may be, structured or unstructured data. So here we have an example where we're tracking financial planning, sales planning, driver-based planning, HR planning, among other components. Drilling into, let's say, financial planning, we're first going to see exactly what Power BI was designed for, output. I wanna be able to see the information quick and easy and, and, have it, I, and have it look exactly like what the end user requires. So from an output side, we can see, in this case, our P&L KPIs. What are our revenues, both looking at both actual and budget side by side. We can look at what our total expenses are. Once again, actual versus budget. So the actual data is coming from your source systems and stored within the Microsoft Fabric infrastructure. Power BI is just bringing it to life. We're also tracking a detailed P&L statement for financial planning. We, can, we want to track what our prior actual was, our actual numbers to date, a base and a target, which can be controlled through what are known as slicers. So right now, we're actually toggling on budget. But let's say that I wanted to change this to a different scenario, and you can have as many scenarios as you would like, to forecast. When I make that change, you'll notice how all of the charts instantly get updated because now it's comparing actual data to my forecast data. Now, this is what's great about Power BI, is displaying the data in a meaningful way. We can track what our biggest differences are, what's triggering those differences. There's tooltip icons. When I hover over a data point, I'm able to see the trends, like what, what is the pattern in this data? Again, bringing the data to life for more impactful decisions within the business. It's all about driving action. It's one thing to bring the data to you, it's another to tell a story around that data and to help you take the next step forward. When we go into edit mode, so simply by clicking on this button here towards the bottom of the screen, this is going to now introduce the first input visual within Power BI, which is called the Actaris matrix visual. It works very similar to any other matrix visual. What we're doing is we're loading in all of your dimensions from the fabric infrastructure, the one lake, into this Power BI report. So you can slice and dice by cost center, by department, by, de by business units, by, um, by uh, products if you wanted to. So a lot of different ways that you can slice and dice this information. Right now, I'm looking at it more on a GL account basis just because I'm in my financial planning module. Then across the top, we have our date structure. So we have year, month, you can have quarters, you can have weeks, you can have days, you can configure that all within the Microsoft Fabric and Power BI 
uh, reports. And then underneath that, we have our base and our target. And our base is actual and our target is forecast. That's what we've designated, but we can certainly change those up or we can even have actual and forecast displayed instead of base and target. So very configurable. But here's where it becomes different. So again, Power BI is displaying the information or allowing me to display the information in the way that I would like that's meaningful to me. But in some cases, you want to be able to start to change that data. Now, again, we're not changing actual data. So that's always going to be locked down because you're just using it for comparison. But for my target, which is designated as my forecast today, is that's what I want to change. So I can either click into that cell and update the number by just typing one in. I also have a different a couple different shortcuts. I can do I 10%. That's going to increase that value by 10%. As soon as I hit save, this is writing back to that one lake infrastructure. That's the most important piece here because again, everything's in one place. You wanna to continue to use this in one place because someone else in the organization that wants to look at the gain and loss on sale of an asset, which is the number you change on a forecast basis, you want them to be able to pull this in their report. So if it's all connected, there is no need to export this to Excel email it to the individual, have them load it into their Excel spreadsheet, and then do this once again, over and over and over again. As soon as you update a number, it's updating that one lake infrastructure, which is the fabric infrastructure, and everyone that accesses or has access to this data point based on security will see that real number. The other thing to mention is being able to not only edit data, which we're going to go through a variety of different examples today, but I can also add a comment to that data set. So if I increase this by 10%, maybe someone else that is viewing this data point wants to see why I could increase this by 10%. Again, this is all built around the Microsoft Fabric infrastructure. There's a lot of other shortcuts, and unfortunately, we just don't have a lot of time today to go through each of them, but definitely makes it a lot easier as you're entering in data from an end user side and then seeing those updates in real time not only on visuals that you've constructed within power bi but again going back to that one lake so if someone on your your engineering team wants to pull that data in for whatever reason they're going to see the same data that you see someone from the ai team wants to run an analysis on that specific data point they're going to see the same data point that you see so again the beauty of one lake or in, in even taking this one step further one drive if i upload a file to my one drive and someone makes a change to it it's not like i have to upload another file and another file every time someone makes a change they're doing it inside of that same document and everyone that has access to that document is seeing that change so take that same methodology and apply it to this one lake which is around data i make a change to a data either in power bi or excel based on that change everyone is seeing it so extremely, extremely powerful. And that's why we're really excited about Microsoft Fabric and putting this in the hands of end users and making it very self-sufficient. So that's kind of the first visual. The other thing to mention in just a planning environment is what is known as top-down planning versus bottom-up planning. The bottom-up is the lowest level of the hierarchy and being able to adjust those numbers appropriately, or we can collapse that hierarchy. In this case, we're looking at total revenue, which makes up of multiple items underneath, but I wanna be able to just change my total revenue. I don't care what's underneath at this level. I just wanna be able to increase my revenue by 10%. And I wanna see the downstream impact that this increase at the top level has. So as soon as I make that change, hit save, this is gonna proportionally allocate to all the children, children entity underneath. Once again, only updating your forecast dimension. So very, very powerful. The next common item when changing data, because everyone, when they think about changing data, they get a little bit scared. Like, why are we changing data? Well, again, we're not changing actual data. We're changing a copy of our actual data, which is known as a forecast or a plan. When we make changes, there's also typically a workflow associated with those changes. I make a change, my manager needs to approve that change as an example. Introducing the second visual of the day, the second input visual of the day, which is called our table edit visual. 
Again, this is in Power BI. You're not going out and logging into a completely different system to make these changes. You're in the existing Power BI reports or the fab within the Fabric infrastructure. You're staying in that, that environment. This is just another visual that can be downloaded from the Microsoft App Source. No different than downloading any other visual, like a pie chart visual from the Microsoft App Source. This is just an input visual versus all other visuals are more output visuals, display visuals. So the table edit visual here represents our workflow. And we have our Northwest division. So let's all pretend that we are the Northwest division. And we can see that we our forecast for this period of time or this cycle is in progress. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to change the data based on our knowledge, either uh, from an individual person or a group of people based on uh, through feedback. So you update all of your numbers, just like we demonstrated before. You make all of your changes. You save those changes. You add any type of commentary. What you can then do is come down to this table edit visual and you can mark this as no longer in progress because we have now finalized this. We are now marking this as submitted. As soon as I hit save, once again, this writes back to that the one link, the fabric infrastructure and instant notification goes out to let's say my manager. My manager will go into the same exact Power BI report because again, this is connected to one lake. All the data is the same. They're gonna go in, based on their rights, and they're gonna be able to see all those changes, all the commentary. Maybe they wanna make their own changes, they wanna make their own commentary at this level. Once that manager looks at it and approves it, they can come in and click approved, hit save, and that will automatically lock down this forecast for that cycle. So workflow is always important when you're making changes. Doesn't matter if you're making finance changes, HR changes, sales changes, all of that can work the same way. You can have different workflows and different people that are allocated to those changes. Now, the last piece is really getting into creating new scenarios. You're going to have your core scenarios that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. You're going to have your actual scenario, your forecast scenario, your budget scenario, and maybe a plan. And you can potentially even a rolling forecast. All of those can be standardized. But let's say someone comes in and they, they want to be able to do best case scenario or worst case scenario. Well, in that case, you can easily create a new scenario using this write back technology within the fabric infrastructure. Here we have that table edit visual once again, being able to list out all of the different dimensions or scenarios within that dimension. So forecast and budget and variance and adjustments and what COVID-19, any naming convention that you require. To create a new one, all I have to do within the Power BI report in that specific Actaris visual is click on this little plus sign. As soon as I click on that plus sign, this is where I can go ahead and create my own scenario, whatever I want to name it. You can do budget one, two, three. We can go ahead and hit save. This automatically creates that new dimension, or that, excuse me, that new scenario. When you create the new scenario, that scenario is blank. There is no data in that scenario. First off, we haven't entered any data into it, but we also haven't told the system what we want to use as a base. This is where Fabric really comes into play, which is more of the, uh, the engineering and um, the machine learning side. You can have machine learning models and algorithms that can help identify patterns and leverage those to calculate a base for this new scenario. You can trigger that directly through Power BI, or you can even leverage our copy wizard. Some of our clients just want to be able to copy data from an existing scenario and use that as their baseline. So a lot of flexibility that you have using Microsoft Fabric, again, everything in one place, or using just a visual to copy data or trigger some sort of algorithm. Very simple to use. All I have to do is click on this little plus sign here and say, I want to go ahead and copy data from, let's say, my actual scenario or my budget scenario, and I wanna go ahead and paste that into my budget one, two, three, which is the new scenario that I just created. So I'm gonna copy data from my actual to my budget, and there's different conditions that you can apply to this as well. Maybe you only wanna do it for a certain department or a certain day of the week. You can be very granular with the amount of data that you're copying over or that you're leveraging within the uh, fabric infrastructure. So at least at this point, 
hopefully everyone understands the importance of the of inputting data directly in Power BI, and we'll get to Excel in just a moment. But it's not just the input inputting of the data, it's the output and the analytics that you get out of the box. It's all of the backend infrastructure that Fabric offers as well, the, the Azure Data Factory, pipeline activity, data flows, getting all that information in, cleansing that information, making it uh, synonymous, uh, synonymized across the organization. So anytime someone comes in and wants to look at that data point, they're all seeing the same number. It's not an old stale Excel spreadsheet and you want to, you have to go look at the version of that Excel spreadsheet or when it was created. I mean, this all this time adds up because you don't have confidence in the data that you're looking at. That's what Fabric is really bringing to the table as well is the confidence and the trust in your data that everyone's looking at the exact same number. So you have the confidence in the reports that you're generating and you're making decisions off of, but you also, the entire team that's using the same data across the organization has the same level of confidence that the information is accurate and not stale. Now let's go to a different category here. Let's start with sales planning. Once again, just like finance and sales, Sales individuals want to see output. Where am I today? Based on all of this historical data that is being leveraged within the Fabric uh, One Lake infrastructure. But what we can do is we can track that in a variety of different ways. We can look at information by sales territory. We can track this by sales manager. So each sales manager uh, tracking what they're actually selling and comparing that from actual to budget. So where are we right now versus where were we last year is an example. And what did we budget for this year? How are we on track to hit those targets? And if not, how far away are we? And what do we need to do to get to that point of actually hitting those targets? But it all starts with visualization, being able to make sense of the data and have the trust in the data. Just like financial planning, there's also items for sales planning. We want to be able, maybe not at the GL account level, but maybe at the product level, we want to do some sales planning. So here we have our matrix visual, the exact same input matrix visual that you saw within financial planning. This is just different data that's feeding the visual. Works the same way as an output visual. You can put customers in a pie chart. You can put vendors in a, uh, a pie chart. You can put suppliers in a pie chart. You can put invoices in a, a pie chart. The pie chart is still the same. It's just displaying different information. Our input visuals work the same way. It doesn't matter what you're displaying. That's up to you. Do you want sales information? Do you want finance information? And we're going to later get into HR. Do I want HR information in this matrix visual? What are you actually changing is what is key. So here we have sales information, so product information. We can also look at this by sales rep just as, a, as another category. If I drill down, we can see accessories here. I have my bottom um, bottom lower lower level product SKUs that I'm tracking. Now I can either budget or plan at the lowest level or even at the highest level here at the accessory level. Lots of capabilities to be able to see your data, forecast this data and leverage this data across all the other components and other departments within the business. You can have workflow, you can have scenario management, and you can even have what is known as master data management as it relates to products. Since we're on the sales side and we're looking at individual products, maybe there's a new product that's coming out. It's not official yet, but we want to simulate if this new product comes out and we're able to sell X, how does, what, how does that impact our finances? How does that impact our bottom line? It's, it's connecting the organization through one common tool just like OneDrive has done for most businesses as well. Here we have our master data management table edit visual. Again, this is the same visual that you saw earlier, just different data that's being displayed in this visual. A list of all my products. If I wanted to create a new product, all I have to do is click on this little plus sign here, just like I was creating a new scenario earlier, same concept, different data and different dimension that we're looking at. We can also uh, modify an existing one. Remember, we're not modifying any actual data. So you will always have that as a reference. This is a copy of that actual data. So if we wanted to change this particular product, for example, it's no longer list price of $8, it is now $10. So we can make that quick modification. We can change the color, we can change the product line that this rolls up to. 
this is really, really great for territory management. Maybe you want to change up your territories. Maybe you want to change up how, you, how each territory is selling certain products, but you don't want to do it yet. You just want to analyze the important and the impact that this is going to have on the organization before you make that decision. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're allowing people to make these changes, see the impact and say, yes, this looks great or no, scrap it and move on to the next scenario. So having these drop down validations is extremely important to say that this product no longer belongs to the mountain uh, category. It's now part of the road category. And that means everything that's connected to this will ultimately change as well. You can always revert back if required. Um, if you can just hit that revert back button and just go back to its default settings uh, after you make those changes. You can sort, filter, search across all these different columns. If you're looking for a specific product, you can do so simply by uh, selecting each of these columns here. So financial planning and sales planning, obviously very different from a business standpoint, but very similar type of infrastructure when we think about it from an input and an output perspective. What are the outputs? What do I wanna see to make my decisions? And what do I wanna change and see the impact that this has on our outputs? Let's go to the next topic, which is driver-based planning. This is very common within a lot of organizations where you have different drivers of your business that are being used to calculate other elements of your business. Price times quantity equals revenue. Price goes up, revenue goes up. Cost goes down, revenue goes up. All of these different things will have an impact on the business. And you wanna be able to change these drivers based on knowledge that you have goes back to the quantitative versus qualitative knowledge. And what, what is it that you're using to make these changes? Quantitative, once again, using the kind of the machine learning and seeing the outputs there versus qualitative information that only a field manager would know uh, based on their experience. So you have both of those worlds kind of coming together in this type of infrastructure to see the differences, quantitative, qualitative combined together with real-time data. So with driver-based planning, in this case, we're looking at a bunch of different products along the left-hand side. We can select a specific product or we can look at all products or anything in between. This is the fourth visual of the day. So first one was the matrix, second one was the table edit, third one was the copy wizard. This one is what we call our visual planner, allowing me to graphically change data instead of me typing in numbers. There's obviously different use cases that this is leveraged in, here, we're looking at a specific driver being order quantity. You can also have a driver like FX rates or tariffs. Every business is different, but a driver is essentially a variable in a calculation. So here we have order quantity. We can produce at this point in time, 15,000 units. That's our, let's say that's our, our threshold. All I have to do is click on this edit button for a certain scenario. Again, we're not changing actual data. And I want to be able to update this in real time. I want to take this data point because I don't think we're going to produce 3,000 units in this month. I believe we're going to in, you know, we're going to do maybe 1,000 units. And so when you see this changing up or down, you'll notice how this number also changes. So it's dynamically shifting the information and still being able to compare that to your actual just underneath. So we're going to be 60% better than last year at this time. Another really cool feature with this visual is what we call a locking mechanism. This locking mechanism can be used in different ways depending on who's, who's leveraging it. So is a salesperson leveraging this? Well, then maybe what we want to do is have this as a sales quota. So this is a sales quota number. I have to sell a million dollars this year. That's my quota. Now, if I don't sell anything for the first three months, that doesn't mean my quota changes. That just means I have to sell more in the remaining nine months of the year. So that's what this really this tool is really cool for. So here we have 13K. That's our static number that we don't want to change. That is what we know has to, we have to hit that number. But throughout the year, there's going to be some peaks and valleys. So keep your eye on this data point right here, this 2,000 that I'm circling. When I move this other data point up, you'll notice how that one goes down and vice versa. If I move this down, notice how it goes up. Because what it's doing is it's keeping this number static, 
but it's proportionally allocating that increase and decrease to the remaining periods. There's also uh, the ability to leverage uh, constraint-based planning. So if you wanted to lock a certain data point, that's also a really cool feature that we offer. Uh, you can do this by percent. You can even right-click and just type in the number if you wanted to. So a lot of capabilities that we can perform visually, but still knowing that we can go into edit mode within this Power BI report and see this in a matrix visual. So here we have our three drivers, quantity, price, and cost. In this case, I want to be able to update my price for a product SKU or a group of products based on the hierarchy. All I have to do is type in R, which is another shortcut function, it means I'm going to fill that value to the right. So this is great for driver-based planning because I want to change the price to five, from 410 to 500. And when I hit save, anything that leverages this price in a calculation or in a different field will automatically be updated. And since this is built on the Microsoft Fabric infrastructure, that means everyone else that sees this data point will see now 500 versus 410 if they're, if they're toggling on that same scenario. I want to make sure that, uh, and I know I've said this multiple times in today's webinar, but you have different people that can work on different scenarios. It's not like it's one for one. I make a change, everyone sees that change, and that's it. That could potentially be the case if that's how you have this rolled out. But in most times, you have your own scenarios that you're working on to fine tune that. And then we'll use that information that you've gathered through the analysis to then update the actual budget, which is what everyone works off of. So think of this kind of like a playground, going in, entering in data, changing data, making sure that you have the most confidence in the forecast for that period of time based on all these different variables and then update the actual budget, which then everyone will see going forward. So last thing, uh, I know we have about seven minutes left, so I wanna be cognizant of everyone's time. We have HR planning. Now I'm gonna skip over HR planning output visuals. I think everyone kind of understands the, the power of Power BI and what you can generate, but more importantly, when we think about the input side of HR, there's different things that could potentially happen. A new hire, a, a merit increase, someone moves from one uh, state to another state or one country to another country, and you want to be able to see all of these changes reflected in the calculations, like for their fringe benefits. All of that can be handled using our input templates or input visuals. So here we have a list of everyone in the engineering department. We can see the salaries associated with this. Once again, not everyone's gonna see everyone's salaries. The objective is that you have rights, role level security or, or security rights and what people can actually see. If I'm the HR director, in theory, I should be able to see everyone's salary. That's what I'm representing here. But if I only work for a certain department, I only have two people underneath me and I can only see their salaries, you can definitely uh, configure the system that way or configure the report that way. Down below is a list of all of our individual employees and the data associated with each of them. For example, the title of that employee, the gender, the number of vacation hours, the sick leaves, the department they work for, what's their start date, end date, are they a former employee, are they a current employee, are they a contractor, are they full-time? What's the number of hours per week that they're working? What's their monthly salary? What's their hourly salary? All of these things can be captured, again, in the one lake and represented here in a Power BI report. Now, the true icing on the cake is the fact that this works across all Microsoft products. I think that's the biggest differentiator because most of the time we go out and we purchase a SaaS system to solve our problem. And we have to learn that new SaaS system. And then we have to figure out how we're going to integrate that information that we've implemented in that SaaS system back into our core infrastructure. What this is indicating is now you don't have to necessarily purchase that SaaS system. You can leverage the tools that Fabric brings to the table, the data integration, the data manipulation, the, uh, the visualization that's more tailored to your business, that you have a lot more flexibility on, the ability to change data or input data. You can combine all of these things 
that Microsoft Fabric comes with now and create your own unique experience. And the fact that this works across all Microsoft products is a huge selling point. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna go ahead and just pull a blank Excel template. And this goes back to my OneDrive example or my analogy is the fact that if I upload a document in OneDrive, everyone that I give access to to that document should see the exact same information. Now take that and apply it to that one link concept around data. What I'm doing now is I'm connecting to that infrastructure through Excel. All of my Excel experience that I have over the last decade, I still can leverage today. I'm not throwing Excel away, I'm improving Excel. Excel was never meant to be a data storage facility. That's why when we have hundreds of thousands of rows in Excel, sometimes it crashes because it wasn't meant to store the data. It was meant to manipulate and analyze the data quickly. What we're doing here at Actaris is we're still allowing you know, teams and individuals to continue to use what they're comfortable with, Excel, Power BI being the two examples. But put a, a, a data structure behind the scenes. That's where Fabric comes in play. The, bring in that one link uh, where you just need to sign into your Microsoft account, which has all of your provisions. Everything is set up for you. You don't have a new username. You don't have a new password. This all works within your current infrastructure. That's a huge selling point as well. But what we're doing is now we're going to go ahead and pull in the data from that one lake infrastructure. And so I'm going to pull in my uh, any any data. So we'll say date. We pull in our date dimension. Here's a list of all of our dates. Or I can pull in my um, departments. So I want to pull in all of my departments. So we can see the departments built in there. We want to be able to pull in all of our um, you know, KPIs or scenarios. So we have new scenarios. Here's budget scenario. If I want to create a new scenario, I can go ahead and add that to here being now the eighth scenario. And I want to call this something else. You can actually enter the data directly into Excel. These could be numbers. These could be dimensions. And I can go ahead and hit commit changes. This is automatically going to write back to the database that one lake infrastructure. So now this new scenario or this new number, this new budget number is available to everyone else. And then this also works with PowerPoint. So you can go right into your PowerPoint presentation and you can embed. So that's what we have this empty slide here for. So I can go ahead and pull in my Power BI report. Let me go ahead and just tag, uh, tag that. Add that to my Power BI or excuse me, my PowerPoint presentation. Make this full screen. It has now been embedded in Power uh, PowerPoint. This can also be embedded in Teams and everything else within the Microsoft ecosystem. So again, everyone's working off that single source of truth. So I know we're we're running out of time here, but hopefully this gives you a good understanding of what you can do with Microsoft Fabric and Actaris together to really build your own planning infrastructure within the business and have everyone leverage that single source of truth so that way you trust the information, you have confidence in the information, and that way your decisions are that much more accurate. So I wanna take this moment here and just thank everyone for your time today. I know your time is very valuable and I really do appreciate you carving out an hour of, of your time to, to listen to me today. We love having conversations with people about their data and their experience. If it's early on the stage of the Microsoft Fabric versus later in, in stage, we love talking to all individuals and all companies to really understand some of the challenges that you may be facing and being able to see if you have the existing tools already to solve a lot of those challenges. And then obviously the right back piece within Power BI is another powerful mechanism for what if and simulation and prescriptive analytics. So. Once again, thank you so much for your time today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. I have a slide here. Let me just go to that real quick. Salesatactaris.com. Happy to have any type of conversation that you would like. And if you want a free trial of the software, we do offer that as well. More than happy to go down that road. So thank you everyone for your time today. And if you did have a question in the chat bot, we will make sure to follow up with you after today's session. Have a wonderful day, everyone.